Hi, I'm Bob, and I'm a basket weaver, and I live in Arizona, and I'm a member of the Basket Artisans of Arizona, and this is an introductory video for those people that are interested in weaving baskets, but you really haven't started, and you want to get the lay of the land and figure out basic tools and sort of the basic standard types of baskets that we might weave. I weave, and most of us in the Basket Artisans weave with rattan, which is, comes from the vining palm plant in Asia, and it's imported into the United, United States through basket reed supply places, like basketcatalogs.com, and it comes generally in one pound bundles, and it comes in several different types. There's flat reed, like this, there's round reed, and then there's flat oval reed. Those are the major kinds of reed, depending upon the kind of basket you wanna weave. And I'd like to introduce you to the three types of baskets that I weave. One is called flat reed. So uh, it just as it says, these are flat reed elements. And we lay out spokes on the table flat first, according to the pattern and the spoke lengths and widths. And the flat reed comes in a variety of widths ranging from 11 64ths wide, which is very narrow, up to three quarters of an inch, which is quite wide and you just have to order it that way. And you can either buy it pre-dyed in different colors or you can dye the reed yourself. And um, so that's flat reed weaving. Then sort of similar to flat reed is twill, which are more complex over under patterns that I think have its roots in, in Native American weaving. And uh, these reeds are almost flat. A lot of these are flat oval. They would either be flat or flat oval. Um, this particular basket uses quarter inch for the base and then 11 64ths inch for the weaver going up the sides. Most of these kinds of baskets, um, both twill and flat reed, have some kind of rim. So there's usually a rim material. And on these, it's a half an inch flat oval rim on the inside and on the outside, and then they're lashed together with either waxed linen, like on this one, or they're lashed with a smaller um, quarter inch piece of reed itself. And some flat reed baskets have handles. So I'll show you a couple examples of handles here. This is a large D handle. So we weave the um, flat reed base incorporating it into this handle and then it goes up the side part of the way and then the top handle shows and you lash the rim around there. So just imagine if this was embedded into this basket and so that's one option with these flat reed baskets. Another option, oh excuse me, here's a, uh, this is a Gettysburg handle which is a slightly different shape. Then we also have um, slotted bases, different kinds of wood bases. This particular one is a slotted base, and you can buy it this way from the basket suppliers. And there's a thin slot in the side, and you can insert your flat reed element into those all the way around, and then you bend the spokes up, and then you weave the basket on the side, so the side is a basket, and the bottom is wood, and you can stain it or paint it or do whatever you want. So that's pretty much uh, an overview of the kinds of reed and types of flat reed baskets you can make. When I weave a flat reed basket, generally, if you don't have a wood base, you're starting with spokes on the table. And what we wanna do is weight those spokes down and hold them in place while we're laying out the base. So we need a spoke weight. That's one of the pieces of equipment or tools we'll use. And this is a spoke weight specifically for that purpose, but you can make it yourself. You can fill a, a Ziploc baggie with stones or gravel or uh, beans or create your own bean bag, but just some kind of a weight to hold the spokes down. Of course, you'll need a tape measure. Tape measure you need for virtually any kind of basket you weave to figure out and measure the length of the spokes correctly. Uh, we use packing tools to pack the sides and bases of the baskets, the flat reed baskets. And it also comes in handy when you're working with the lashing on the top rim of the basket. And I'll put this here so you can sort of see that the top rim. And um, oh, another piece of material I didn't tell you about that we use a lot 
is if you look inside this rim, you'll see there's a little piece of like a brown rope twine. We, that's called seagrass. And seagrass you can buy from the basket suppliers too. And it's a nice decorative element that goes in the top between the two rim pieces and it hides the spoke, the tops of the spokes that have been cut and tucked. And speaking of the rim, when it comes time to lashing, if you're gonna lash with waxed linen, like in this basket, all you do is you take waxed linen, whatever waxed linen um, thread you have, and it's a thick, thick wax coated thread. Uh, you can take a needle, a tapestry needle, and use it at the end of it to, to sew in and around the um, rim. But if you have your, if you're gonna be lashing with reed material, it helps enormously to have a thing called an easy lash or tool which is sort of like a big, huge, thick needle that's geared for reed. It's got a hole on the end, you stick your reed in the hole, and then you use it like a needle to lash in and around the rim. So easy lasher. If you're doing a lot of flat reed baskets and want to make life easier lashing the rim, get these. And they come in different widths, quarter inch and 11 64th inch. Uh, another very handy um, element or tool set to have when you're doing flat reed baskets are some kind of clip because when you make the rim the rim is usually consists of two pieces of flat oval one that goes on the inside one that goes on the outside and while you're measuring and setting these in place you have to clip them in place so they don't just flop out and so we use either the old school clothespin or you can buy um, uh, I have these craft clips called Evergreen, and it's a plastic clip, flat on one side, round on the other, and those are really great for clipping. And if you want to take it one step further, you can take small zip ties and poke the zip ties in and lash, zip tie these together to hold them in place with your seagrass on top while you're lashing the material on and getting your rim uh, nicely woven into place. And I think that's most of what I wanted to tell you about flat reed basket weaving. Next, I wanna talk a little bit about weaving with round reed. So when you're weaving with a round reed basket, like this, you can see the side elements are usually a smaller gauge reed. The top rim is a larger gauge reed. And your round reed comes like this, again, in one pound bundles and you can dye it yourself or buy it pre-dyed. Again, you wanna soak it all the time in water to make it very pliable and flexible. And the second you feel it drying out, take your spray bottle and spray it and keep it damp. But the two tools that I use most with round reed, you don't need a spoke weight, you don't need clips for the rim, but what you need is a rim cutter. And this is a cutting tool. It's a sharp um, clip tool and you can get these online or uh, network with people, your other weavers, and they'll tell you how to get these. And then there's a crimp or cutter tool, which I find very handy. To me, it's an all-in-one tool where it's like a beading tool and it's a crimp or cutter. And I think you can get these also on the basket supply um, stores online. It has a wider section and then a narrow tip. And if you put your reed through the wider section and gently crush it, you can, you can take the reed and crush it enough so you can bend it and make little elbows. And in a lot of round reed weaving, you do that to tuck the reed in spaces. If you clip it at the very narrow part of your tool, it basically cuts the reed off at a point. So this crimper cutter tool becomes a very, very handy tool in round reed weaving. And if you are interested in weaving round reed baskets, there are a lot of available patterns out there, but if you want to have sort of a, an, uh, an all-in-one compendium of everything to do with round reed and learn how to weave bases, all the different side weave techniques, how to weave all different kinds of rims, and how to do uh, rope rash, wrapped handles, you should get Flo Hoppy's book, Contemporary Wicker Basketry, and it walks you through all those different elements, bases, side weaves, rims, how to calculate the spokes you need, and within this book are a number of baskets um, patterns and she'll walk you through from A to Z, including every technique and every part of the basket, exactly how to weave it, how to make measurements, um, 
how to work your way through this. So this is a great resource, and this is how I learned a lot of how to read, uh, weave round reed baskets. And uh, all of these kinds of baskets, you can start with patterns, which is always the best way to start. Then you don't get frustrated, you know exactly how to measure things and each step to take. But as you evolve with basket weaving, feel free to vary things, vary the shape, vary the kinds of reed you're using on the side, vary the colors, mix and match some of the patterns, and then little by little you start to create your own baskets and make your own design. And I just made this one up uh, weaving a couple of months ago, and I just thought I'd like to do some simple weaving over two, under two, four weaver, four rod whale on the side, and then a few of these arrows, and then I like this more complicated, I think it's a six row rim. And it looks complicated, but if you take it one step at a time, you'll be amazed how easy it is to get through. Um, so have a great time getting into weaving. I hope you weave a lot of baskets and explore all the different types of basket weaving. And look for some uh, more beginner videos. Uh, one I'm gonna do on a flat reed basket and another a basic small round reed basket.